Welcome to part two of our series on Coherence 1212 Cache Configuration Enhancements. In this session we're going to look at custom configuration namespaces and how we can use these to get objects from other frameworks and containers and integrate them with Coherence. So let's look at today's agenda. Quite simply we have three topics to discuss. One is the challenge of how do we get objects from elsewhere? How do we solve this traditionally with Coherence? And what can we now do in Coherence 12.1.2? Um, after this, we're going to look at the uh, certainly the new introduction of um, Coherence Spring support that, that comes as part of the Coherence community. This is a community developed namespace for Coherence 12.1.2 that allows tight Spring integration. Lastly, we're going to summarize some of the points and some of the lessons we've learned during this talk. So using objects from elsewhere, let's take for example a very simple simple uh, challenge. I've decided to create a cache store, something like I used in, the, in part one of this series, um, but it turns out what I really want to do is actually get this cache store instantiated from somewhere else. The reality is what I want to do is this. I really want to say to Coherence, look, I'd like a cache store, but my framework or my container or some other piece of infrastructure is going to provide the object. That is, I really don't want Coherence to create or instantiate the object for me. I really want that object to be, perhaps it's already configured, to be in some words injected into Coherence. So how can we do this? Well historically what we would do with Coherence is um, configure a static factory. We'd you know, use a layer of indirection, create a new class, define a static method, and say in the class scheme that there's a class factory and specify the method that will provide you with the objects. So while this works as a solution, it means that you actually have to create a special class for each instance where you're doing this. This becomes problematic in a number of ways. Um, firstly, using statics. Statics themselves, can, as we know, can make testing a little difficult in some cases, certainly inside of containers. Secondly, it creates effort for the, for the developer. And although there are sort of generic solutions, it's not really the ideal solution. Or alternatively, as we've seen in sort of CDI, Juice and Spring type integrations, um, uh, some people have worked out quite crafty ways of doing this. So one of the examples is to extend the internally designed or provided default configurable cache factory class. This class in editions of Coherence prior to 12.1.2 um, really is an internal class and it's often used, uh, well it is used inside of Coherence to determine how to instantiate objects, get caches and so on. Of course you can completely override this simply by extending it. But to do this, you really have to know about coherence internals. Um, typically, you also have to override an inst um, the instantiate any method to your custom instantiations. So again, it's another layer of indirection you'd have to write. Alternatively, we've provided the Spring Aware Cache Factory, certainly for integrating the Spring. But ultimately, this is just exactly what the previous two points say. Uh, extend this class, override this method. One of the challenges though is if you use this approach and you want to use another framework or you want to use multiple frameworks together with this style of integration, basically you can't. Well, you can't very easily. Because we don't have multiple inheritance, you ultimately have to create a custom configurable cache factory that wires together all of these factories at one time. So as long as uh, yeah, you want coherence to create an object, everything is fairly easy. So why would you need this? Well, the classic solu solution and the classic problem is when you run into the case where I need, say, a connection pool or uh, some other resource from some other framework, j and resource, perhaps a transaction manager. And the challenge is, well, how do I get these into my cache store? In part one, we showed perhaps you could use injectables to have them injected. But if I just want the object to come from another framework, then I have to do all this work. Really, we don't want people to do any work, and it should be very simple to configure. So hence, in Coherence 12.1.2, we uh, introduced the concept of custom configuration namespaces. For those of you who have looked at or used or seen the incubator, certainly with things like push replication, you may have seen this um, approach um, over the last few years. 
what we've actually done is migrated that concept and built it into coherence. It's very much like what you can do with frameworks like Ant and Maven, adding new uh, extensions into the configuration. And what we've done is build this directly into coherence, this capability. So let's look at what we've done with Spring. So on the Spring front, um, what we've done is created a specific namespace handler to deal with Spring Beans, is the common use case. In Coherence now, we can actually specify through XML namespace extensions, introduce a new namespace in, into our cache configuration. And here we can see we've introduced the Spring namespace. Now notice this URI is a class scheme. So this class defines a namespace handler for Spring. We also have defined an XSD for, for this new namespace. So this allows us in, in our IDEs to do completion when, when typing in XML configuration. Of course, this is optional. It just depends on what your IDE is configured and how you're editing your XML files. Then now we can see the use of this new namespace. And essentially what we're doing here is we're extending the types of configuration coherence can deal with. So at this point here, Coherence is actually quite happy with this foreign namespace. Yeah, A, Coherence itself doesn't need, know it needs to process it, but it passes the processing on to, for example, the Spring namespace, in which case the Spring Bean is defined using the specified application context. And then later on in our cache store scheme, instead of having to specify an instance or, or a class scheme, we can actually use a native Spring integration. So we can say it's a Spring bean and that a particular cache store bean from the available application context will be used. Coherence will happily respect this and not try to create this. It will simply ask Spring, in this case, to provide this bean and then use it from then on. Interestingly, after Spring has provided the bean to Coherence, Coherence will actually then search for injectables and inject any uh, parameters that need to be injected into it. So in this way, you can support both CDI, Spring injection, and Coherence injectables, all in the one class. So what do these namespaces allow us to do? Well, in the past, we, we briefly touched on these in the first, first part of the series. But let's uh, carry on with some possibilities here. One thing you can actually do is replace, as we've seen, standard coherence configurations. So where we'd usually use class scheme or instance uh, XML elements, we could actually use Spring Bean. Or in fact, in, in this case, any other type of uh, framework. Could be JNDI, could be Juice, or something that you've may, may made up yourself. Furthermore, we could actually refine some of the configuration objects. While we're actually processing these namespaces, the namespaces themselves can actually change the configurations. So you could use a new namespace to define a new scheme, a new cache mapping. Or in fact, you can do things on the fly, perhaps even refine and redefine existing configurations. One of the nice things that you can do is also define new resources. So your namespaces can define resources put them as part of the resource registry, which we will touch on in the next part of the series. Um, and from those, they can be then injected into other beans, other objects that Coherence uses. On top of this, you can define new features. And we're going to cover this in part four of the series. How do we define a new feature for Coherence? So for example, a cron service. Ultimately, through this mechanism and this framework, you can actually completely replace how Coherence is configured. Coherence itself uses this framework to configure itself. So it's interesting that you could actually define a new way to configure Coherence, and Coherence will, uh, will absolutely respect that. So imagine this. If you can build your own, you can do a lot of things with this. You want to define a service that runs in the background, embedded in the cluster. You want to redefine indexes, maybe preload some data. All of this you can define with your own namespaces. Perhaps you want to define your own application-specific processes that run. These will then be run inside the cache services, and that gives you immediate highly ava high availability, all for free. So in summary, Coherence 12.1.2 introduces the concept of custom namespace. Ultimately, this allows us to integrate third-party frameworks directly into Coherence. 
Coherence will happily use objects from third-party frameworks instead of creating them itself. Not only this, but it allows independent development of extensions, as we'll see in our next, next side, next part. And eventually, if you like, complete customization of coherence. So in the next part of the talk, we're going to look at how we can start building our own custom namespaces. We're going to look at the configuration framework and the configuration model that we can change at runtime. Thanks for joining us.